Good evening. It's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up is Mr. Tom Quinlan, Jr. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm here uh, for 373 um, River Drive. I uh, went to submit a permit to redo the roof, and I believe oh, this, uh, this, this is the old Lesco. Where the old Lesco's arrived. Okay, right. Yep. All right. Um, to, it needs a new roof, and structurally, the whole uh, truss system needs to be removed and redone. So at the time, um, we proposed to add four feet. Um, the lift that Lesco has in there is actually up in the trusses and, and isn't, you know, can't be used well because of height-wise and all. So first page, what I, I did is a drawing just to show what the, the yellow would be, what it is now, and adding the four feet in the pink would be what the proposed is, and then the, um, you know, what the limit, we, you know, they could go for a residential home would be the 35 feet, the, the third. They want to, look, want to raise the roof four feet? Yes. So we're going for 18.6 and 22.6? Yes. And the pink is kind of the outline of what it would be. Yes. And the next page is? The next page, uh, Paul Jr., the son actually's uncle, I guess, in India, just drew that, and that's why I did the sketch on top. It doesn't show the right side with the four feet going up. There's not going to be a corner window. Um, the back window is just going to stay the same. And the there is two windows in that back section which proposed to be removed and blocked in. The old paint room is what I would consider it. There's that side garage. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's going to stay as it is. Yeah, all, all that's the same. It's basically the 40 by 40, the center that's going up. And in the drawing, you know, the, the picture that he had drawn, it doesn't show the roof coming up to four feet, so I just wanted to, you know, sketch that and show you what Tommy, it was. Tommy, the only reason of this is just to make that garage coach on the Correct. Correct. Um, Tim just, Tim, I submitted the permit a couple weeks ago, and Tim Nyhart, the uh, building commissioner, had asked me to come in and get was, your blessing. Is I guess. this the Lesco garage? Yeah. yeah. I, yes. I wish he had brought it in when he came for site plan approval and yeah, he exactly. said no exterior alteration. Right. Yeah. I think you're gonna to have to reopen the public hearing. This is this is a pretty big change. Yeah. So the neighbors need to know. Yeah. I agree. It's not a small thing to like it's more than a little just anybody here that's for the uh, uh, North Hadley Fire Station, they're not gonna be in tonight. They have to continue it for two weeks. Tonight, we'll be here. We'll be back in two weeks from tonight. Okay, two weeks from now. Two weeks from tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Yep. I don't know about that color. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. remember when they painted the uh, Sutherland Bridge? The state decided to paint it blue like this, and it's horrible. Right. It's something like amber green, something dark. What's it going to take to reopen it? You're going to notify all the. I got to notify the butters. I don't even know if we got to publish it in the newspaper. At least we should notify the butters, right, Bill? I think I, I would think so. I think we need the mailing list and send yeah. send a notice to the butters and. Uh, I'm, I'm one, so I won't be participating in the decision. Um, but uh, I will say that's, that's like nothing else in North Hadley. Um, I think well, what, that doesn't what, say much. So, what, what's so. this, what is the, <laughs> the purpose of this? Is that, that that's actually going to be there, this thing? Yeah, it's an overframe. It's the same that, you know, it's not going to be any higher than the actual that drawing is not correct. That's why I did the sketch. Um, okay. You know, the, the actual cross section. This here would be? That, that would be the height limits of it, yes. So the roof would be higher than that? Yes. This roof is higher than that? Correct. That's what a, a residential house, you know, a lot of them are, 35 feet. Right. You know, the zoning. I just, I just threw that in to show that it's still well below a two-story residential home. I'm not, this, <clears throat> that's kind of out of character for the neighborhood. It really is. Yeah, but I mean, he, he drew this, yeah? Yeah, but, but this is this right here. It's got to be more accurate. Yeah, but it's because. not going to be like that, right? This, where did that come from, Yugoslavia? It, it's it's going to, 
if you see the Where paint, did this drawing come from? India. 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 Okay. But this is this piece right here. Yes. And this, which is still proposed to go like there. this. Okay. What's the word? Just like this. Yeah, just like this. This peak is going to be up higher. Right? This, this, this is going to be raised up here. This, 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 this blue, whatever you call it. What do you call that? It's just an overframe, just to, to give it, the building some more character. And if that is the actual signage you're asking for, that probably is too much. No, the only sign that we approve is that one. Right, I have, whatever's on there is whatever, that, if they need more, then you approve. I'm, I'm not here for the sign. I understand. Yeah, that. that's, yeah, they'll I'm have to come back. They, there's a sign here and yep. the sign yep. up yep. here. Right. So. And we, we only have, we approve that sign right there. This guy drew the this thing after the site plan. Uh, yes, like two three weeks ago, I want to say. He just did it. The, the Paul Junior, the son, actually seniors in India right now. Um, Paul Junior was was over there, and the uncle drew it. Yes, and he brought it back for the you know for the family. Okay. So. Why don't you get, get me an, a, get me another mailing list on labels? Okay. Okay. And I will just put out the mailings, letting them know that we're probably, probably hold that public hearing on the first. Well, should he have something at the uh, town clerk's office as well? People are going to want to see it. So is he actually proposing this? Yes. 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 Can yes. can. Basically, I can let me explain on that picture. So the if we start from the left, right now that's all staying the same. There is two windows there. I shouldn't say staying the same. There's two windows will be blocked in. Um, on, as you come around the side, the proposal would be to add the four feet. And there's two um, double hung windows where I circled existing to what remain. You, what what plan are you working on? This plan? No, off the picture. Okay, off the picture. Yes. So he's six. Expanding the building, he was short of parking before, he's really going to be short of parking he's now. No, he's just coming up four feet with the right. main section. Oh, but I thought this was added. No, no, he that's just the... headroom for a lift. What is this? That, that's just windows. Those windows are going to be added. What, what's, what's this? And this is a corner that's not, it's a, it's a, you know, glass on the corner. That's not going to be there. It's going to remain block and have four oh. feet above it. And this is just basically... All the 40 by 40, the main building, not including this side or this here, is going to propose to be lifted four feet. You're not going beyond its, its foot? No, no. And it's only the 40 by 40, the main section, you know, where they, you know, be able to use the lift. And this is just an over frame, you know, over the trusses. Yeah, he's going to come back with a color thing too before he does that. Not just. I, I, I would, I could, I would send this out to the abutter, but if I sent this out, you would be in big trouble because right. there's more questions that are going to be answered. Correct. Can you get us a? Can you get me a, a reasonably accurate picture of what it's going to look like? Sure. And what I'll do is I will put that in the mailings. Okay. Yeah. When I send it out, as opposed to putting something, we can still put it in a town hall. But if the neighbors get it mailed to them, because it's only going to be like two total of three pages. Okay. Then I can mail it out to them, and at least they'll have an idea of what it's going to be. And yeah, that's okay. Or they, may, and I'm sure there's several of them are going to be coming in, anyways. but at least they'll have an idea. They can have something to physically go to get. Yep. Okay. And okay. Tommy, don't send it to India. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just attached that to give the you know original look, and I wanted to, that's why I did the sketch to show you that basically just coming up yeah. the four I, feet. I'll be honest. I'm not in favor of this this blue stand. If you're going to raise four feet, just raise the roof four feet and get rid of this. You don't need. Do you need that? No. That's just that, that's just aesthetic. Yes. Okay. Could you get? I would. I would. I wouldn't approve that. Okay. But I mean, you're raising the roof four feet. Wait a minute, you tell me the way he got this, the way he's going to do it, not this India one. He doesn't need this. Why doesn't he? He doesn't. He doesn't do anything. It's pure sense. 
This thing is this blue thing right here. Mm -hmm. It's just an accent, right? Yes, yeah, so it's just that it, it looks like it's standing out, but it actually is just a continuation of the, right. you know, the wall in that section. So, yeah. it's like a two-tone car. <laughs> you got a bunch of Ferraris sitting in the front yard. <laughs> I like that. Might <laughs> be a Lamborghini. It looks in the showcase. Too. Yeah. I think that's that. So, how much uh, time do you need to turn around an accurate drawing? Get it uh, next couple days. Okay. So get would that be soon enough get to get on the next meeting then? Or? Well, we'll do, we wouldn't get the next We'll do it for the first Tuesday in April. Okay. Okay. That will give you a chance to mail everything out to the people as they, they can look at it. It will give you a couple extra days to get it done. So if you get, if you get me the drawing within a week, okay. get me, uh, well, if you get the mailing list, get me one copy for each of the mailing lists. Okay. Okay. And then I'll let them know. Sounds good. So Are you going to be the representative presentation or will he be here? I'll touch base with him. He'll be, he'll be back. I, I believe he's coming back the 13th to 14th. So okay. we'll yeah, just no, get in the works no for him. I'm sorry? No, we no camels. Uh, okay. Right? We the camel outside. All right. Thank All right. you. Yep. Thank you. Dave Riggs. Ladies and gentlemen, I own Vision Showcase. Last um, meeting was here about a sign. I do have a representation and sizing of the sign. I uh, checked with Tim, the building inspector, about the color. Oh, John, you were moving, huh? Yes, we are. Are you moving to? 207 Russell Street. Oh, we got moving by the, uh, by the bank? Yeah. No. No, no. no that's, uh, oh, oh, the no, new, like the new dentist. The, the, the new, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, 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 that would be the sign, it's under the 40 square feet, and right. the red would be stagecoach red, which is on the list of colors. Okay. That's going to be lit up at night? Um, to be determined. I know if it, if it is, it would be an external light shining right. onto it. Yeah. Who's so, the address 207. Well, Russell. you don't know if it is going to be? The plans right now are not to light it. No. You don't operate in the dark or what? That's where I do my best work. Yeah. <laughs> At least I've been told. There you go. I'm not going into It's unit that 15. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> do a, make a motion to waive further site plan approval allow as a business use an aquifer and What's the sign. address on that one? Yeah, 15. Okay, so that's the motion to waive further site plan approval to allow this as a business use in the aquifer and to approve the sign. At sign. what address? 227 Russell Street, Unit 15. Okay, so move. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Good one. Garage. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Anybody on the planning commission? Yes. Come on down. Okay. How should we do this? Should I bring a yeah, chair? Of course, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Bring a chair up and move up. That's Larry. That was Larry's special. Okay, yeah. good. I'm not Larry, as I told you on the phone. Yeah. But so, are you here for the marijuana bylaw? Yeah. We don't have any questions or anything. We were just thinking we better be here. You're not doing anything tonight. We're, we're not sure. It won't be, it won't be anything major. It'll be a little minor thing to talk about it at all. Just, if we start to come, we figure we better keep coming and show you that we we're support still, you. We're still interested. There's a public yeah. hearing okay. scheduled on a marijuana bylaw the first Tuesday of April. Okay. All right. That'll really be the next time we're going to have a big discussion on it. Okay. All right. Okay. At the next meeting, probably won't be any discussion on it. 
Okay, sweet. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for and interrupting. That will be at Town Hall. Um, yeah. 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 We expect yeah, this I place will be moment. closed by uh, the April 1st. That's the step of that's your Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I have um, a couple of handouts. First, what I wanted to do was, uh, we're talking about the MS4 permit yes. and how it relates to um, municipal code. So I just want to take one and pass it along. Um, What's your name? Patty Gambarini. You got a business card or anything? You know what, I, I think I gave them away. Gambarini with a G. Oh, there it is? Yeah. Okay. Give me one copy. I do have one. Okay. So I thought what I do is start big picture. And then we can go into specifics, if that makes sense. Yep. So um, Hadley was subject to the earlier MS4 stormwater permit that um, began in 2003. A new permit was issued effective July 1st, 2018. Um, and that permit was issued in 2016. Um, but it became effective July 1st last summer. So you might see that MS4 2016 permit, but that did, so that's when it was issued, but it became effective July 1st of 2018, just to make sure that's clear. So that, that was issued to the town? Or? It was issued um, jointly by Mass DEP and US EPA. But to the town of Pavlin? Uh, yes, you are a permittee. You have a regulated area. Okay. And so there's about 260 communities, I believe, in Massachusetts that are subject to the MS4 permit. Um, there are 23 in the Pioneer Valley region um, that are subject to it. And um, in some communities, it's not the entire community that's subject to the permit. Um, it's based on um, urban um, density and census tracts. Okay. That's how they define that. We're on television and people probably have no idea what we're talking about when we say, you know, the, the MS4 permitting process. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should give a background in what it is all about to our audience. Okay, I will try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it is a stormwater permit that EPA issues um, related to the Clean Water Act. And the idea is, um, you know, through many studies, it's been determined that stormwater is a major contributor to water pollution. And so um, starting in 2003, they started working with smaller um, municipalities that qualify um, based on census tracts um, to regulate the discharges that a municipality makes from its storm system, which is defined as MS4, Municipal Separate Storm System. I forget what the other S is, yeah, but so it's MS4. Um, and those are the discharges that actually go into waters of the United States. Um, so any wetland, um, pond, lake, river, stream, brook, um, those discharges from your stormwater system are regulated, and that's what the permit tries to get at. There's six parts of the permit, and they call, call them um, sort of minimum control measures um, that a municipality or a, you know, a, a permittee needs to meet um, under the terms of the permit. There's public, uh, public education and outreach, public involvement, um, there's a illicit discharge and detection program so that you're like really understanding your system and then you're really um, measuring. There's um, now in this new permit, um, you have to, to go to your outfalls that go into these waters and watch for dry weather flows, sample those flows, and that, that will all fall under, typically um, under your Department of Public Works. 
And then there's also elements, and the public works departments are typically also working on good housekeeping practices. So that's another part of the permit. Um, and that has to do with municipal properties, how you store salt, um, how you manage your parks and pet waste in your parks, and how you take care of your turf fields, that kind of thing. Um, so in the 2016 permit, there's a much more spelling out of all of that. What a wild bear. What a wild bear that takes a dump. We'll have to worry yeah. about that. Don't worry about that. No. Um, and then, so, and then this part um, that I'll be talking about in a more detail with you tonight um, relates to um, pre-construction, uh, um, construction and post-construction. So getting at uh, um, controlling erosion and sediment and uh, stormwater running off of sites while they're being constructed but after construction as well. Okay. And because the Connecticut, Connecticut River flows through Hadley and we discharge in the Connecticut River, that's what makes us subject to MS4. Yeah, and it's really all your your rivers and streams and any in water Connecticut body. River, yeah. All the rivers, the streams, the North Abbey Pond, and all that, so yep. on and so And the Fort River. And anything that goes yeah. into those bodies is all regulated. That's right. So it's not just the separation of sewer and stormwater, it's both? It's stormwater under this permit. This storm water. But if you had a sewer pipe connected to your storm system and it was that would be a, you know, you'd have to take care of that. Yeah. And you'd, you'd find that when you're we, doing we, your sampling. We have in the past found that where it's cross-connected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's all the yeah, so it's good to take care of that. Yeah. Right. yeah. So there, does that make sense? Well, it, it okay. does. It all does. Right. And uh, there was a couple of times when we had to issue some building permits. I remember in our industrial park, the, uh, the, the, federal government was involved under the Clean Waters Act, but I have not seen anyone come back with that because there was some question about how far the parameters extend. In other words, yes, the Clean Waters wants to have a clean river, and then the brook that runs into the, to the river, and then the little tributary, and then could it extend to your downspout, for example. How well, far? if your downspout is going, you know, if your downspout is discharging to your driveway, that that is discharging to the roadway and then going into a drainage basin or catch basin along the roadway, and then that's getting carried out. I mean, all of that is connected in a way. So it's it's sweeping. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. It's re I mean, it's ultimately related to what you're putting into rivers and streams. That's why, yeah. that's why it's, that's the whole thing about removing 85% of all solids. So mainly, yeah. it's the DPW is the one that's going to monitor this for the town of Hadley? Uh, well, every town's, you know, making their own policy choices about how they're going to comply with the permit. So. Um, you know, there's certain parts that make sense for public works to oversee, um, and then, you know, other town boards overseeing other aspects yeah. of the permit compliance. The DPW is responsible for the identifying and monitoring the discharges that are existing, that weren't designed or may not have been designed over time to meet the MS-4. And it's the planning boards and a board of health responsibility, in a nutshell, to ensure that from this point, from 2003, and now from this, in the, the update of MS4, it's our responsibility to make sure that any design that comes in with the conservation commission is like three boards in charge. If I'm right, it's the board of health, conservation, and planning board in our in our town mm -hmm. to ensure that things are proper to MS4, depending on who's. Who's uh, able to fall on it? Right. So, for and instance, like the, like the malls, when they do a project and all that water runs off into their drainage into the Fort River, so that is going to be in compliance with the MS4. Correct. But who is the enforcement officer? You currently have it as your um, zoning um, enforcement officer. Right. Yeah. Hadley's, That's how you currently have it written. Hadley's one of the, it is the largest agricultural community in the state. And we have five, 
six dairy farms. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be subject to that uh, as it was in Vermont? Um, farms are, I, I'm not exactly sure. If you look at the, um, at the way your stormwater, um, you know, within your zoning um, bylaw, how your stormwater management and erosion control um, elements are written, um, farms are exempt from, you know, this part, this part of it. Um, I think it's good to try to figure out how, you know, we might work with farmers, um, you know, especially with uh, systems like the Mill River. Um, you know, spreading but, manure. Yeah. When do you spread the manure? And yeah. Do you have yeah. To just best it practices. Into the soil yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For, for our purposes, very little yeah. zoning applies to okay, farms. That was, so yeah. it's primarily the Conservation Commission with has jurisdiction over what farms do. We don't have to, we don't do site plan approval for barns. Right. So it would, it would just never come to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. But for general information, I think it's pretty important. Okay. Yeah. So um, this chart you have in front of you just, so the, perm, the permit is for a five year term. Um, what I've tried to show in this is sort of you know, what exactly is in the 2016 permit under the um, construction and post-construction parts of the permit um, that relate to your uh, municipal code and updating it. Um, so they mention, and you see here, the sections of the, of the 2016 permit, um, what needs to have been completed on the, the 2003 permit, um, and I believe you have those in place. We'll, we'll walk through it um, a little more specifically. And then um, within year one of permit effective date, and um, those were also required under the 2003 permit. And I believe you have those in place. Excuse me, so, you say that this is not part of the zoning bylaw, correct? Uh, this is out of the MS4 permit, so the 2016. So under what authority? Can you require or we require the zoning enforcement officer to enforce this? So, the I'm sorry, this is very confusing. <laughs> it does get confusing. But what I'm showing you here is just a timetable for when you need to update to um, update certain parts of your stormwater management and erosion control mm -hmm. elements. Um, which currently sit in your zoning bylaw, mm -hmm. and 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 the timetable for it under the 2016 permit. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, there's the so what you should have accomplished under 2003, really in columns one and two here, and then um, year two. I guess I wanted to show you this because um, I think when you and I talked. Yesterday, there was the idea that you would be taking a bylaw to town meeting. Um, and I, I wanted to show you, because I, I think that's going to be a really tough hurdle um, to be able to do that, but that you have until the end of June um, of next year um, to, to adopt these other elements under the new stormwater, by, stormwater permit, under the MS4 permit. So let me just want to make sure we understand. Yeah. The X is in column one and two we have already done. I bel so I'll go through that with you, but it looks like to me, and you might want to confirm with town council, that you have these elements in place already. You have all of what was requ required under the 2003 permit. I believe in place. where you have the X is I believe because we have two, we have a general bylaw and a zoning bylaw. Yeah. And I believe between the two of them, you have the illicit, we have, yeah. We have yeah. all those things addressed. Yeah. This is our bylaw. It's uh, the, the general bylaw. Right. We also have a zoning bylaw. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, then by the end of June 2020, you can see in the third column here some additional um, requirements. There's new definitions. Um, that need to be adopted. 
Um, there's um, the need to require low impact development planning and design um, and that it be used to the maximum extent feasible. Um, the design and treatment of infiltration practices follow guidance in volume two of the Massachusetts Stormwater Handbook. Um, and then if you flip the page, um, the list continues and there are specific standards for new development and redevelopment. Um, and the, um, the, I guess the, the larger change under new development is that projects need to, um, if you go down to um, part AII3.G, so new developments need to retain one inch from impervious surfaces and or remove 90% of total suspended solids or 60% of total phosphorus. So that's a new standard for, for new development projects. And then if you go down to the next um, AII4 uh, point B, that's for redevelopment projects. There currently aren't a lot of standards for redevelopment projects. And this one is retaining 0.8 inch for, from impervious surfaces um, or removing that you know, um, equivalent in pollutants, which they deem to be 80% of total suspended solids and 50% of total phosphorus. Okay. We've instructed, for site plan approval, we've instructed our reviewing engineers and all designings, designers, even though it's not part of the bylaw yet, yeah. we've asked them to comply with the latest MS4. Okay, so you're asking them to do these standards already? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Yeah. So. Um, However, we got to. We need to put the paper, the the, the pen to the paper to make yeah, sure it's incorporated. Yeah. Okay. So I, I wanted you to see this so you can understand the time frame. Okay. Now, what is un, under two point three, two point three point six? What is low impact development planning? Mean? So low impact development is a an approach, um, and what it does is encourage sort of. Uh, historically, what we've done is put stormwater in pipes and conveyed it away. In low impact development, the idea is to capture rainfall close to where it falls. <coughs> and so it involves a process by which you look at a site when you're going to develop it and understand where, where does it make the most sense to preserve, the, preserve property or preserve um, space and then put those drainage facilities and and typically those are infiltration facilities um, you know that soak up rainfall close to where it falls we're, we're very big lately on underground infiltration systems okay so we're, under parking lots under and, parking yeah. lots and underground yep. whatever works for them yeah and we've been highly encouraging that with many developers good that's great we've been doing that actually for a couple of years now yeah. for, for two reasons um, actually, I have to take that back. For the main reason being aesthetically, it just looks better. Yeah. And you get rid of the ponds. Mm -hmm. It's not always possible, but and they can utilize space better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, they actually get double use of the space. They can still put the parking in and everything. Oh, and. Said infiltrators too. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. also, and just just as background, we have an ongoing discussion with the select board um, about town policy on allowing tie-ins to the municipal drainage system, mm -hmm. um, and it's, that is addressed in MS4 at some at some point. In other words, a, a drain. A, 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 an entity that puts in a development. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we do not allow them to tie into the town drainage system, okay. stormwater system. The selectmen are considering possibly a policy change on that to allow some municipal systems to tie into the town drainage system. What is the? Is there a policy in MS4 about tying into the municipal drainage systems? I know the state doesn't allow it on Route Nine. So I'm not sure I, you're talking about connecting with other municipalities. No, 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 no. We, we oh. got. We got. We got. There's a. There's a town has a. Has a stormwater. 
catch basins in a street that, yep. you know, that are linked one to the other, yeah. and that goes into a brook or a stream or a pond or someplace else. Yep. Currently, we do not allow a developer to, to tie, tie into, into that drain okay. system. Um, the town has a couple of systems, a couple of areas where they want to tie in new municipal developments into those systems. Mm -hmm. And I know on Route 9... Oh, like schools or other... Right. Okay. On Route 9, the state will allow nobody to tie into right. the drainage system. Because the drainage system is over taxed. That's right. right. And is that, that's all managed by Mass DOT, On, right? on Route 9. But okay. the side streets are managed by the town. Okay. And so, there is, does MS4 have a policy in tying into municipal drain systems? like that are you aware of not that I'm aware of okay. that the you know I think that the issue is water quality ultimately and it's sort of what's going you know what's ultimately getting to the receiving okay. waters but we just yeah. allowed the senior center is tied into municipal that, that, drain that, that was existing that was an existing tie-in no the curtain drains were tied in not there was no drainage this drainage is new and that's what's allowed to tie into that system. That's it's just been done. Yeah, I mean, I think to the extent that you can um, to you know infiltrate on a site, um, and you know to the to the maximum extent practicable. Okay. Yeah. Right. But is that correct? Is that Senior center, the building had a curtain drain right. tied into long time because they had a water problem over here on this north end. Right. They, when they designed that drainage system, they put a 12-inch overflow going right into the stormwater. For, for the super big storm, but the, the yep. majority of storms will infiltrate. Right. Right. Okay. But that's the same thing in North Hadley. The same identical thing that happened here. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so either if you don't store the water in underneath the ground, then they'll put detention or retention ponds into with an overflow into the stormwater system. Mm -hmm. Well, even with the underground one, there's an overflow, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. 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 And there's there's a, there's for sediment to clean it, manholes to clean all that out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> So if you want to, oh, if you want to go to the next um, set of documents, oh, I didn't get those to you yet. Um, Thank you for uh, the mouse. Sure. I think I had six copies. So um, what I did was I pulled out um, the construction and post-construction elements um, and illicit discharge elements from the 2003 permit um, just to run a check, a uh, quick check on, on your um, zoning uh, where you have these um, elements. And this is section, so the illicit discharge detection elimination requirement in the last um, stormwater permit from EPA is addressed in Chapter 195 of your general bylaws, and I think that's what you were pointing to over there. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that that um, and Corinne, my colleague, went through a lot of your code in 2017 when we had a grant to sort of check up on things, um, and then I quickly looked at the. Um, the zoning bylaw section on erosion and sediment control and stormwater management. And, you know, th this list here um, in the margins is where I found that information. And I think um, we didn't have a Word document um, from you in your zoning bylaw. I think it was a PDF that um, my colleague Corinne um, converted okay. to a Word document. So. I could have been more detailed, but I couldn't read 
I, I couldn't, you know, so the way it converted I could have emailed you a Word document. Oh, you have a Word document? Yes. That would be really helpful. Yeah. So okay. don't you want me to email it to you? Yeah, that would be great. I, I'll, well, I, I, the whole zoning bylaw is a Word document, so I mean, you only get the whole okay. zoning bylaw. Yeah, so, you know, I, I don't know if you can see, but the, like, letters and numbers started running over each other. Yeah. Um, so, but you get the idea, like, 24.3 is where you're really addressing the disturbance, and you're coming in under that, you know, you, you're regulating properties that are um, smaller than one acre. So I, I think you, I mean, it looks like you are good on all of this. But again, you, I'm not an attorney. You might want to ask your town council to look at this and just make sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and th this might be helpful. This is pulled right out, out of the 2003 permit. <clears throat> um, I think there were just a couple things in here I noticed. Um, in an earlier section of your zoning bylaw, I think this is under site plan review, um, section eight. Um, there's a, you would have uh, provisions in here for stormwater runoff and erosion and sediment control. Um, it might be good to just have some alignment with um, section 24. Um, and then in the, um, in section 24, um, it talks about um, exemptions and for projects that are um, receiving an order of conditions from the conservation commissions that they're exempt from compliance with this bylaw. That's in 24.3. Um, I would suggest maybe wording it differently um, that they're not really exempt, but that they're meeting the requirements under this, under the Wetlands Protection Act. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a yeah. couple questions, comments. When we looked at the MS4 permit, when Harry was still here, I believe, the recommendation was to kind of eliminate most of the zoning bylaw and just reference a general bylaw that would have all of these things. Yeah. Is that still the case? Yeah, and that's what was in the recommendations. A state model bylaw is, um, you have it in your packet there. I copied the first page so you can find this document online. But I also copied page three from the document, which has the recommendation to have it be a standalone general bylaw and not to be in zoning. And they give specific rationale in here okay. as to why. Um, so I would agree with that recommendation that um, as we go working on this and updating it, that um, it be pulled from zoning and be a standalone bylaw. Okay. Now, yeah. I know, I'm not going to pick on you. Don't, don't take it that way. Right. <laughs> but you keep saying how you recommend that we look at this, we look at this. That's what we're contracting with PVPC so yeah. that you, your PVPC would look at the bylaw and say, okay, and give us a bylaw we can adopt. And we would just kind of go over it and make sure that, you know, we're okay with the general idea. Um, but we're hoping to come have PVPC give us a document that we could simply go to, you know, cancel one and put into the general if you would. Yep. Okay. So, um, in 2017, under that grant, um, Corinne actually did started to do that with your with um, she pulled it out of zoning and started working it to um, meet the new standards. Um, it needs additional work because there's been a lot of sort of moving parts and things that are developing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm happy to work with you and sort of bring that to a finish. Um, but I think, as I was saying to Bill on the phone yesterday, there's some policy choices that need to be made. Um, it, you know, the way the zoning um, element for stormwater management and erosion control is written is that um, you're the stormwater authority. And if you want to keep it that way and maybe just articulate how other projects that go through the Conservation Commission notice of intent process that they, uh, you know, we need to just figure out how that's going to come together. And it might be working fine for you now. Um, and then, you know, I, I just don't know how that's working. Okay. 
Um, and then I think some of the other, um, one, of the, one of the other key things is the way the MS4 permit is written under redevelopment projects, there is a provision to do um, with redevelopment projects, and I think this is like for really, um, you know, sort of um, densely urban areas, but you may have a need for this. Um, for redevelopment projects, you can, if they go through the, the process of um, demonstrating that they have gone to the maximum extent practicable and they can't quite meet that full requirement of 0.8 inch of infiltration, you can offer um, <coughs> off-site mitigation. And that is something that could be written into the standalone general bylaw. <laughs> But um, there are a series of decisions that need to be made, and we worked statewide on this um, under a recent MS, uh, a grant that MassDEP offered for MS4 compliance, and it's um, how to set up an offsite mitigation program. So it walks you through some of the choices um, and also some of the considerations of, you know, whether you want to set it up. And if you do, how you might want to set it up. A couple of questions. The, getting back to the, what's, what does 0.8 inches of infiltration mean? That means that any new, any um, post construction, Solids. I'm sorry. Solids. Well, it's the, the first 0.8 inch of rainfall that falls on a site during a storm. Must be absorbed on site or infiltrate yes. on site? Yes, yes or the equivalent of pollutant removal needs to occur. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the off-site mitigation may be something we may need to be certainly incorporate. Not that we're going to have dense areas, yeah. but there's certain areas in town that will not infiltrate because the soil is heavy mm -hmm. clay, and you could put water on it today. No, not today, not in the winter. But in the, in the good weather, you could, put, you could put a gallon of water in a little hole and come back in a week and that gallon of water probably is still there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we probably should definitely consider the off-site okay. process. So what I can do is I can, um, well, maybe at the end of our conversation, we should come up with a strategy for how to proceed. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So what is the acronym of... E and S. Erosion and sediment. Oh, it, yeah. It, okay. Yeah. So, um, how does one go around with with soil? Everything based on soil conditions and earth, right? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things, you know, that that's happening at some of the schools that are getting certain grant fundings that are requiring them to do. Um, to go a little further is, you know, you can think about a, a development project not necessarily having to infiltrate, but if you capture and reuse water. So that's always another option, is to capture rainfall from your roof and then plumb so that you have um, water flushing your toilets available from roof capture. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, sort of advancements in how to deal with rainfall and it, you know especially if we're seeing rising groundwater we might want to think about some of these other practices that might make a lot of sense so some of the impact here is that some sites will probably be less developable or undevelopable because they won't be able to comply with the regulations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what i'm thinking the off-site Mitigation is something, something we should definitely incorporate. But that's for just redevelopment projects. Or just redevelopment. Yeah, just redevelopment. Yeah. That's not new construction. No, no. What do you do for new construction if they can't meet it? Then I, I think no, it's not developable. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know, I think that's all I have to, well, the, the last page of this is the summary that, um, that we did under that 2017 grant. Um,
Corinne looked at you know, your illicit discharge um, provisions in Chapter 195 of your general bylaw um, and reported that that looks good. Um, then there's, of course, the mention of um, the stormwater management and erosion and sediment control provisions being in the zoning bylaw and the recommendation that it should come out. Um, and then the subdivision and zoning, um, there were some elements in there that need to reference the standalone bylaw, if that's where it's going to go. Getting back to the 0.8 inches of rainfall, yeah. where does that have to be measured? Uh, that's an engineering calculation, and it's based on the um, effective, the new impervious area on a property. So you have to have a rain measure out there to determine how much rain you get? Well, they do a calculation. So if you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to try to manage that 0.8 inch of rainfall, you'll know what that is based on the amount well, of cover it is and the runoff coefficient. And you're kind of backing into the number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not an engineer either. <laughs> so I'm grateful that you're not. I'm very grateful that you're okay. not. I do remember now seeing this, this summary. And I think okay, that, good. that is where we, we segue from, okay, we realize the grant does not produce a bylaw for us. So we shifted from grant funding to our PVPC contract mm -hmm. and put this on Larry's list. Okay. I think Larry was still here in December of 17. Yes, he was. And then it just didn't, uh, he had recommended that every, a lot of things were in flux, and I think you said that the, uh, uh, the state drainage manual was still in, in flux. And yeah, the um, stormwater um, handbook yep. is being updated, and the hope is that it will be updated in time so that, you know, it's consistent with what the new MS4 permit is saying. Yeah. Okay. And so what, one thing that's come around, I um, attend uh, statewide stormwater meetings. Um, there's several regional coalitions that meet occasionally in Worcester. And um, you know what I've heard from Mass DEP and EPA is that it might make sense to adopt a bylaw that creates the authority um, and the legal framework, and that a lot of the standards and everything else go into a regulation. So that may be something you want to think about. If you want it all in a bylaw that goes to town meeting, or if you want a bylaw that, that creates a sort of framework and all the legal standing, but then the regulation has all the detail, that in five years' time could change again with a, a new MS4 permit. Not that I, I don't think EPA will be quick enough to come up with a new MS4 permit in five years. Um, but a regulation. The board at time, time to time, can amend it and change it. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Yeah. So, so, like our subdivision regulations. Right. 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 But it, you don't need a town meeting vote Correct. to do your regulation. Right. The board does the regulation. So right. Not, so you, Repeat what you just said again about creating the authority or the or the. Well, just like the subdivision regulations, you have an authority. Like so, for the stormwater. Um, all the standards and the submissions, all of those requirements could go in the regulations and the bylaw would establish that authority and the legal standing to okay. do the regulations. So you have, you have to be creating a new board to do something like that? You no. Said? No. No. It would give you that authority. So the I believe. town, town yeah. meeting would vote to authorize the planning board to adopt regulations to implement MS4. And I think you have that currently in the way you have it written in your zoning bylaw. I believe you. That you have the authority to, um, where was that? To set regulations? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. we have that written into. Oh, yeah, those are definitions. Probably at the end. But you got to hold the public hearing to do that, right? Yes. Yeah, to adopt regulations that hold the public hearing. Right. Yeah. We well, I mean, did they used to do the same thing in the source. Right. Well, it's it's somewhere at the beginning. Authority. Here it is. The first page. Oh. 
Um, the planning board may adopt and periodically amend rules and regulations relating to the procedures and administration of the stormwater management bylaw by a majority vote of the planning board after conducting a public hearing to receive comments on any proposed revisions. Okay. So we already have that. Then. Yeah, you already have that. So it's, you know, it's, it, it's just, uh, you know, pulling out some of the guts I think of yes. of of what's well, in here. So we want to keep section. We want to keep some of the things in section twenty four primarily. So let me ask this question. So you would keep, let's say, purpose and authority, and maybe even definitions and applicability. Some of the key, you know, legal pieces of it would stay as a as a general bylaw. A general bylaw. Right. So you would. So would we would take. Let me just ask the question. You leave section 24 in and reference it to a general bylaw, or it would completely take out? Uh, well, I think it's important to <clears throat> reference it wherever it makes sense. Okay. But so it would be a standalone. But this would come out all of these so, pages. So, so you, would, yeah. you, would, you, would, you would simplify section 24 to be center control, maybe maybe the purpose and authority, and then reference the general bylaw, and that would be it for section 24. And, could be in the zoning bylaw, or would we be amending site plan approval to include a reference to the general bylaw? Yeah, and maybe take this out completely. Okay. Yeah. So just replace 24 in the zone with 24 in the general. Yeah. And yeah, then reference 20 reference the erosion and sediment control. Can't be in site plan approval. Well, certainly, Bill. Would, would let, let, let me let me explain. Let me let's, let's talk yeah. about this. Site plan approval is only for the business, the various business zones and industrial zones. Mm -hmm. You want this to apply to homeowners as well? Well, any well, the way the MS4 permit is written is any disturbance of an acre or more. Okay. So, so it could be a home. It could okay, be. Okay, then yeah. it can't be site plan approval. The site plan approval that you'd have to you'd have to greatly expand site plan approval to homes. Well, I no. think what Bill was suggesting is that site plan approval would reference out to the general bylaw. But what I'm saying, site plan approval is unique only to businesses and the industrials. Right. Fields. Right. And homes don't apply. Right. That goes right to the boat. Right. So, uh, right. So, anything that has to do with stormwater management and erosion and sediment control, be it in subdivision regulations, be it in site plan review, would reference out. So, everybody's going to this one place if they have a disturbance of an acre or more. Okay. So, the a general, the general, the general, the general. Uh, what did I say? An acre. So, the acre. general okay. bylaw yeah. would apply to everybody, but we would be strictly uniquing yet the planning board would be responsible only to what we have now business and businesses and industrial zone and a building inspector and a conservation commission would be responsible for the other ones that's a policy choice yeah so then you, you probably would want to articulate that in the stormwater bylaw okay. that you know when when it involves this the stormwater authority is a planning board if there's an NOI involved or the property is um, residential, you know, you can you can okay. sort of set that authority okay. up in a different okay. way. Okay. But, the, yeah. but, but the planning board would be the responsible party for adopting regulations pertinent to those things, correct? That's a good question. Uh, if there's mean, different authorities, uh, like how, exactly. yeah, that's a good question. I don't because know. If, if the, right now the planning board can adopt Regulations you, for the zoning bylaw, but your regulations for your stormwater, when the planning board adopts adopts that as that, the building inspector still has to follow those regulations. That's my that's that's my point. Correct. Uh -huh. In other words, right now the general bylaw, like we were just saying before, yeah. the authority. Yeah. So that, that this is where I'm getting. I'm trying to decipher. Yep. If the planning board, if the planning board is responsible for it, obviously the businesses and industrial, mm -hmm. conservation and building inspector. Well, conservation would, would also be involved with a lot of that stuff. And the building inspector would be responsible for the for the residential sections. Yeah. And regulations. And regulations. Well, for the 
enforcing the general the general bylaw, the planning board could the planning board adopt regulations to cover all of them? No, I understand your question. I don't know the answer to that. I okay. think that's a good question. Or yes. do we just leave it as a general bylaw? Well, right. well, if we leave it as a zoning bylaw, it applies to everybody, but there's a long list of exemptions in here. <clears throat> so, yeah. uh, including single family residential uses to serving less than 40,000 square feet, unless part of a larger common plan of development that would disturb more. So, right. a subdivision would be applicable, would right. be subject to it. A building on an approval not required house lot would, would be right. exempt, most likely. Under an acre. Under an acre, yeah. Under an acre. But since, yeah, it, it doesn't matter, yeah, they, they like to have to disturb more than an acre. Most most one acre lots are not going to disturb an acre. They're only going to disturb a portion of it. Yeah. Under the regulation part, the only authority to uh, formulate a regulation is the planning board at a public meeting. And once that regulation is there, that building inspector has to but, comply with that regulation. But as zoning enforcement officer, he has authority to enforce the zoning bylaw and, re and regulations under the zoning bylaw. Right, he can't make regulations. But if it was a general bylaw, I don't know if he, the zoning enforcement officer would have authority. If it's not a zoning bylaw, I don't know how much authority he as a building inspector has to enforce a general bylaw. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. In one way, we're, we're playing semantics here, however, they are important ones. Yep, yep. And I think the regulation concept is a good one because this is going to change. Under the Clean Waters Act, there are a lot of suits going all the way to the Supreme Court now. Mm -hmm. And so this could change depending on what the Supreme Court rules in certain areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know there's one out, you know, some farmland out in Michigan that uh, is, I think is headed to the Supreme Court. But uh, so that's probably the best place to put a lot of the things rather than in, in a zoning bylaws. Well, I, I, I agree with that. I'm just questions about who can do what? Yeah. 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 So it certainly is. It, it's a great idea, I think, to set it up as a regulation yeah. because when you bring in a you know, ten-page zoning bylaw uh, and, uh, and try to get everybody, especially at ten o'clock at night, to understand that uh, yeah, we're not really. This is what the, what the state wants us to adopt. We're not really going to argue about whether one inch or 0.8 inches is the right number or not. Mm -hmm. That's been decided already. Yeah. Um, and uh, if somebody wants to argue about that at town meeting, off we go. Yeah. But what's nice about a regulation, you don't have to run back to town meeting because right. oh. state changes, everything changes from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can, and you amend them. You can change it. I mean, the, a zone bylaw, you're going to change it at best twice a year. Right. If it's a regulation, you can change it with a month's notice. Mm -hmm. Roughly, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. the publication times more than anything else. Yeah. So um, how would you like to proceed from here? I don't know if you want to make some of these small changes in the zoning bylaw for town. Uh, do you? Yeah, no. OK. Let's let, let do it once and do it right. OK. I mean, we're not, like you said, we, we don't have to do it we're not going to get it in time for May, and that's fine. <clears throat> but as long as we're planning to get it, probably, I'm going to guess next May would be the time frame. Mm -hmm. Or maybe possibly this fall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, yeah, probably. Yeah, make sure you get enough time, Jimmy, so you don't yeah. do right. it half half mm -hmm. hazard. Right. Yeah. We've we got, we got a lot of questions. So, um, what I'd like to have you do, or whoever in your office, mm -hmm. Make the suggested changes to the appropriate sections of our zoning bylaw. Okay. And for that matter, subdivision reg, because we can change the subdivision regs. Well, that's a regulation. We can change that when we need to be. Mm -hmm. So get, get those get those two going. And 
do we need to find out from our town council about what we're talking about, whether we have a regulation and a bylaw? Yep. And can we give the zoning enforcement officer the authority? So we should need, we should need to talk to our town council. Yeah, on those I think there's. I yeah, I think that's a good question for your town council. Okay. But also, you want to know too that the, the regulation don't conflict with the bylaw or the zoning law. Well, that, that's what they're going to be drafting, but we wanted we, that's that's what we're going to find out is if, can, 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 can the general bylaw give authority to the zoning enforcement officer to enforce it? Is what we're is basically the question we. But I also thought your question was about if there's the multiple authorities, who can adopt I mean, the there, regulations? There's multiple questions. Like yeah. one, one, one is. Can we can the, can the general bylaw give a zoning enforcement officer authority to enforce it? And okay, if it's in the general bylaw, and we dole out responsibility, the planning board has this, building inspect zoning enforcement has this, and conservation has this, and the overseer of that regulation is the planning board. Can the planning board adopt? Regulations that apply to all of us. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. I think that's a good question to the town council. Right. Dividing right. up the responsibility between the DPW, the Conservation Commission, and the Planning Board, uh, there's going to be overlapping situations there. You can I have think two or three organizations yeah. doing the same thing. That's correct, we, yeah. and we don't want that we, to happen. We, we, we don't, don't want, want that. We, we want it to be. We want it to be. The Conservation Commission has, in any water, they have authority over quite a bit of it. Um, however, we also want to make sure that we're not doing this with each of us. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're going to have. We, we can't help but have some overlapping authority in some cases, especially when we in, in, in this kind of a situation. But we want to make sure that at least it's clear enough um, who has the majority of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. I you know, I talked to Janet Stone today about that kind of stuff, and it's just like the storm drains are not their thing. They were that dumps so many feet away from the waterway, that's where they kick in. Right. Right, I understand that. Right. Yes, yes. So about the manholes and stuff like that. No. That's not their... That, that, that's absolutely, I, yeah. I agree that there, there is relative clear where they have, there's a the clear authority where the conservation has versus everybody else, but sometimes those authorities do overlap, mm -hmm. especially with site plan approvals and developments. Um, well, Bill has that catchphrase in there, uh, any boards have... I'm not worried about the catchphrase and approvals. I just want yeah. to make sure in the general bylaw that we are as clear as we can be on who has which authority where mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Is this to do what? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. You want to talk to, to you understand to talk to Joel? I, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I may run a draft by you. Okay. Because. Yeah, there, there's a lot to this. Yeah. That should definitely go in front of town council to get uh, it. will. That's yeah. the problem. Well, we, we're, ultimately, yeah. the, every bylaw does get reviewed by town council yeah. before um, yeah. before it goes to the town meeting. But well, instead uh, of us chasing our tail, you know, you get a are there any communities in Massachusetts that are exempt from this? Oh yeah. Yeah, so um, I think I mentioned at the beginning it has to do with what's qualified as an urbanized area by census tracts. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, so, um, you know, they use a census to determine which areas are, you know, more densely populated and hence more have more impervious cover and are likely delivering more contaminants to wow. waters. So that's, that's how they get at that. So there are communities that aren't, you know, aren't subject sure. to this permit. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I don't believe they are, but no. yeah. Well, it's an interesting use though, because if you use census tract, we don't have, what, three and a half grocery stores in Hadley because we're really hungry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, if we had a census, we would. We have a lot of impervious surface. Uh, Most densely populated area in Massachusetts is right. East of us, the UMass. Yeah. But that's not in our census tract. Well, 
it, the water. Well, well that's, it's, 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 that's that's one of the the quirks of all of this. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Will educational institutions be exempt? No, I don't think so. No, UMass has a permit. Yeah. And and they're part of the Connecticut River Stormwater Committee. Okay. There's uh, Hadley's a member, and then UMass. UMass probably hired 20 people to handle this. You know, so it's a good job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, so what I hear you saying is um, that you're looking for suggested changes um, to you know what what it would take to pull this out of uh, the zoning bylaw make a standalone bylaw and then uh, related regulations. Yes, yeah. But then I think there, we really, you know, we really need to talk about the important policy choices. So I think what we can do is as we go flag those places within it, um, and I think this um, will take everybody having a look at it and then having, you know, a specific meeting on what the off-site mitigation program might look like. Is that available? Could you email it to us? Yes, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I will email you the entire zoning bylaw in Word format. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. Well, you had the subdivision, but you have the subdivision right because you wrote the subdivision right. Or Larry updated those, so you should have those. Okay, so them. we have those in Word. If you need them, okay. we can give you that in Word format too, because I okay. have that in Word format. All right. I'm pretty sure. I, I should know be able you, to find yeah, we asked that for Larry. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we all miss Larry. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps emailing me pictures and stories of. Oh, it's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Like uh, he's I, sitting I, there. Yeah. He's, this is my view. I wake up in the morning. He's got the yeah. nice water. He's having a the balcony yeah. and the water. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, yeah. I wish I could be Where, there. <laughs> he emailed me a couple of those. Right. He did, he did that to me back in uh, yeah. December. So I said, "Oh, hey, Larry, here's my pictures. You know, snow and everything else." Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Where is he? Mexico. Yeah. Mexico. Nice. So, so actually, we've been working with PDPC for quite a while, even before there was the the services contract. Uh -huh. uh, there were one-off projects like the our transfer development rights bylaw, which Chris Curtis worked on. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot of our stuff, uh, okay. but I just don't know how well organized it is on your end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that uh, there's a lot of. Uh, GIS work that was done, but apparently your former GIS guy had sort of odd naming protocols. Yeah, so it's been hard um, for our current GIS. Um, I call him a guru because <laughs> yeah. he knows so much um, to find some of that stuff. And then the format that in it, that it is in might need to be updated as well. So. Yeah. Okay, so great, but you're, you're comfortable based on your review that we're, we're okay for June 30th. Yeah, and you know, I would, I would, maybe that's another thing for your town council to just look at um, what I've done and the requirements are there to just, you know, sort of put his or her own check mark next to it. Okay. Okay. But from what I can tell, it looks, you know, it looks like you're in good shape. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 Very helpful. Thank okay. you. So we meet, we, the PVPC is on the first Tuesday of every month. So are you going to be our contact for the meantime coming back to see us until we get this straightened out or is it somebody else? Uh, well, it may, we're trying to figure that out. Um, okay. Ken Comia is, um, right. has replaced, um, you know, Susan um, and what Larry was doing. And he comes from Southboro. Um, he was a municipal planner there. And before that, he was a municipal planner in Florida. Um, so he's not specifically familiar with the MS4 permit stuff, um, but it, uh, we want to bring him up to speed on that. And so I'll probably work in tandem with him um, okay. here in Hadley so that we, you know, make sure you have what you need. Okay. Yeah. Are there any communities in the state that already adopted rules, regulations, 
and procedures for this EMS form? For the new permit? Right. Um, not that I know of. Not that you know of. Yeah. So everybody's in the same boat as we are? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the timetable, you know, you have until end of, of year two, which is June 30th, 2020, um, to adopt these new standards. Okay, so yeah. do we want to let this percolate a little bit and pick it up after town meeting? Why don't you, why don't I, you I, wait until they you, notify what, us? What, 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 what would you have ready in a month from now? Do you have any idea? Um, well, I think it would be helpful to know what town council's response is to the questions we had tonight. Okay. Um, so a month would put us beginning of April. April 2nd. Yeah, I have, um, like I personally have a couple of big deadlines at the end of this month. So okay. it might make sense to wait till after town meeting. Okay. If if that works for you. Or right before town meeting. So yeah. why, why? Well, that would, be, that would be the first Tuesday in May, which is May seventh. May seventh. Bill's gonna uh, contact town council about it. When is when he gets the results? Forward the results to to this lady. Right. And. Well, then we can go from there. Okay. okay. Uh, but we can sort of have that May 7th date yeah, out just, there. Let's hold it. Yeah. Pencil it in. May, May okay. 7th is the first Tuesday, is the first meeting after town, town meeting. I think May town meeting is the third, or the second. The second. 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 Okay. 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 And, uh, okay. So we'll skip the first Tuesday in April and we'll concentrate on. Getting town council's information, and I'll get you the info. I'll get you the copy, and you can okay. get us. Yeah. I'll get you this fun reading. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> way back when, when uh, we were adopting site plan approval, there's a section in there on uh, <coughs> the state. What is it? Safe Massachusetts code on hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. And I happened to work for a chemical company, and I was unfortunately as familiar with it. So I printed out the state uh, code on that. I did, in fact, I was cleaning up the office that I found it. It's a binder that is it's a four inch binder with three inches of paper yeah. on just hazardous waste of the regulation. Of course, it's you know, 20 years old, but most of it is still appropriate. And what a you're talking about boring reading. <laughs> well, anyway. we tried to make this, you know, more readable. There's like little, um, when you get into it, just images that give you, um, you know, it's it's not mm -hmm. really giving itself to photographs this topic, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we had to use a little graphic. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. You've been a big help. All right. Thank you. Thank you. bills to pay. We have a invoice from TVPC and the amount of one thousand. We're back in the spar this season. Joseph Brown will bring us some spar. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. One thousand seven hundred twenty-two dollars and eighty-eight cents for the uh, annual contract that we've been dealing with. So seventeen twenty-two eighty-six. Eighty-six. Motion to pay. You have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. How much is that number? 1722.86. Also, our pay for the first quarter for $575. Each. <laughs> yeah, cream on. <laughs> That's our total quarterly. That's for the whole year. That's what you get. That's right. Motion to, motion to approve. So I got all in favor? Aye. 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 Can you oppose? Motion passes unanimously.
just for everybody's information, the building inspector has requested um, that the, his proposed zoning amendments not be placed on the annual this May town meeting where we're going to be discussing. They must have a meeting with us so we can do, so we can have a discussion on uh, the proposed changes. So after the town meeting, after the town meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can, you know, we'll set, I'll, I'll find a time you can meet with us and we can set one meeting just to discuss that stuff. And the proposed zoning amendment for the senior housing district extension on Middle Street has been depending off in the air. Um, the uh, abutters are hoping to be able to buy the property from the proposed uh, property owner, and Mr. Tom Reedy has asked me to hold off holding the public hearing until the very last minute um, in case they do come through. Then that article, article will be pulled entirely. So, uh, you know, I, I would like for future discussions about that over 55 housing, should it be allowed in our center district? I, I after what I see what went in, I, I certainly and I don't think I would want to see that right in our, our center district. I think it's you know when this come in, nobody knew nothing about it, basically what it looks. In the meantime, I I went around other communities and look at uh, over 55 housing and it was a lot of them a lot more attractive than what we got here. I uh, just. You know, well, who knows? A lot of them are not as attractive, too. I mean, they are all over the park. Right, but there are some that are really nice. Well, we we well, know the entrance ways. The cost is, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars too. Right. Well, as I said before, if you're traveling around, you find something that looks good, take a picture of that's it. That's right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Take a picture of yeah. it. When you find something, you know, it's, it's, that's exactly. I was doing that for a while. I, I took some pictures of some various developments that uh, um, the Dunkin' Donuts sign. That's right, Jim. You know, I used to carry my camera and my my console all the time. Know, the uh, I remember going to Best Buy came in and Best Buy wanted that big blue sign on their building, mm -hmm. and they had it. Oh, we have to have that. We have to have that. I was driving through out just outside Washington D.C. There was a Best Buy built, the Best Buy in the building, and their sign was actually inside the window, and it was probably about as big as that, those two black pieces right there that said Best Buy, and it didn't look anything like that monster blue sign. Yeah. I took a picture of it, and I've done that with a few places, bring pictures back to say, yes, you can do this, and here's proof. You know, did the, did the so, guy from Dunkin' Donuts say that this is the only type of sign he could put up? I mean, we could reopen. I, that's hor a horrible image for the center I have with Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, it, there's a sign in Williamsburg that's really quite attractive. So, anyways, you know, live and learn. Yes, so if you find something that you really like, if you like seeing your house, take a picture of it, bring it in and say this well, is... Well, you know, if you say live and learn, if you learn something, can we do something about it, or is it we're just stuck with it? Well, well if, if it's already been built, it's probably too late, but, it, but for, for the future. What if, the what, future. If, what if Hadley paid for the sign, which wouldn't cost that much? Where are we going to put it? Take, the, take that orange sign down, Dunkin' Donuts in the center of town, and put something up a little more uh, attractive. Well, it's like the one in Belgium and uh, what way Anyways, okay. You know, it was, it was right out here on other things on our agenda. Plenty of work procedures. I think we need to change the procedures about these developments coming in, especially municipal developments. We went through all this stuff with the senior center. They, they do all the construction plans, everything, and then they dump it in the, the planning board's hand. Instead of coming in with a, a preliminary schematic or a what, and ask questions, they spend all this money, and then the planning board don't like something or wants to change something, 
guess what? Change order. That needs to be changed. That, that is not a planning board procedure because in the planning board site plan approval, we encourage, and in the subdivision reg, we encourage right in the regulate, right in the bylaw, we encourage developers to come in ahead of time. If they decide not to, unfortunately, well, we, we can't What, do what happens with our, with our town, the library, the, the, the senior center, and now the... You're absolutely right, but we can't force somebody to come in ahead of time. But if we tell them to look at, you got to do this, you know, and to me, that's this, we, have, we don't have authority to do this. this. Does, there's no excuse here because they hire a OPM to comply with our rules, regulations, state laws, local laws, and that's not being done. And then it's no problem. Change order. I, I, you're right, but we can't force somebody to come in with a preliminary plan. I would love to be able to do that, but we can't. I think you know, we probably should, after the town meeting, talk to the select board. When somebody comes in and has an idea of a new building, and instead of appointing a committee, it's that before they go for any engineering studies, that's when they should have a courtesy to come. We'll have to kind of ask them, request. Well, that, that might be yeah, well, going to the select board to ask them to do something like that. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Try to, to encourage that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, there's mistake after mistake after mistake. And these are costly mistakes. Even before someone comes, before a town meeting with a proposal, you should have some hard and fast numbers, size of building, cost of building, so you know what you're getting. Way, way before time, when there was a big project, the people would get a, a packet of what the thing was going to cost, what it was going to look like. You knew everything about it before it even hit a town meeting. And that's the way it should be. It should be. The yeah. both the pros and cons. So you hold your forms, people ask questions there. And it's like when I ask a lot of questions, some people don't like me asking questions. But when it comes to present it, how many times it happened in front of this board that there's an engineer come in here, he makes his presentation, we don't even have to ask any questions in his presentation. He does such a bang up job. Every question we have, he already answered that. And that's the way a project should be. Can't argue that one. Right. I mean, it happened to us. Yeah. Oh, you've got an open checkbook. Exactly. This is what's. This is terrible. It really is. Anything else? Everything else? Update on. Um, <coughs> So, a couple of things. Um, Jennifer, as the administrative assistant, went out and tried to get information on how other communities are handling minutes. <clears throat> and she said she knows that there are people who run do services, but she couldn't actually find anyone. So she checked with, she's on an administrative, town administrator or assistant mailing list. She checked with a bunch of towns. Um, some of them pay someone to attend the, uh, the meeting and take the minutes. And uh, five of them said, but if you find anything useful, let us know. Okay. Um, well, you mentioned that. I talked to this guy right here. Transcribe yeah. the minutes from the tapes he puts. Okay. And well, he's... Well, He's willing to do that as long as you find the format, right? You yeah, have I, the I format. Have format. What, 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 you, do you have an hourly rate that that would be an idea? Um, <clears throat> well, I was thinking about that. Do you have an hourly rate that you guys want to pay? I was thinking somewhere around 18 bucks. We, we've never had an employee. We've never had an employee? No. Well, you, so, you would be our first. <laughs> so, we, 
See well, here's blood. what I found uh, from messing around with the school committee uh, uh, meetings. You can go to YouTube and you can actually download a transcript of the whole meeting. Now that's kind of useful and kind of not because you get you, you get everything that every, everybody said and it's not always right. Some right. of the words are kind of wrong. So, but you could go through it and find the key moments and say, uh, you know, that and going through the video, you can find the stuff that was voted on, the okay. important stuff. But I would say it would cost, it would, it would take, a, to go back and, and look at old meetings, I would say it would take a couple of hours oh. per meeting. For, for instance, the stuff about the North Avenue Garage, yes. I just need two or three bullet points, phone ball. Yeah. Uh, how how right. about this? But the law the, requires you, you got to go, not by the way you want it, the law requires the actual vote, and some documentation to how that vote well, comes to be. And, and the general topics of discussion. Right. How, how about we, we try this? I will make entertain a motion to authorize John to do, let's say, four planning board meetings. And make a transcript of it, see what time it takes you, how it comes out. <coughs> Bill, Bill, talk to Bill, he'll give you the format. Yeah. And let's see what it looks like, and then we can go from there. Right. So Super. this yes. wouldn't require you to watch it again because you're here. You can take the notes as you're here, correct? Well, well going, going forward, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Going yeah. forward, yeah. 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 For, for the choir meetings, you're going to have to look at the tapes. And, and the, my notes are available. Right. So between he Bill's can. notes that you have handwritten and what you see, See what you can get. Yes, it'd be great if you had a format that you wanted me to adhere yes, to. Yes, you get it. Bill has I, mean, I think I would rely on Bill's notes and not go through the thing again. Well, unless you wanted to see what he thought was important. Well, let, let, right. let, let, oh, let's. Come on. This is a year that's been screwed well, up. What I would do is going forward, it, right? I would just pay attention and say, oh, there's an important thing happening at 15 minutes. I better go back and look at that. Yeah, that's, right. Now. right. Yeah, you could you could take notes and then just go back through it and, and, and transcribe it for the other part. We're going back in time. Let's say, how about if we simply do it for the month of January and February this year? That way, the recent ones. Probably four meetings, maybe. Right, four meetings. Yep. See how they come out, and then if they look really good and everything is nice and good and everything else, we can go back for the, we'll start going back for the in time. Well, how do we get great? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Budget. Hmm? We, we have a budget. We right. have a budget. Nixon, Nixon told me there's money in our administrative budget. Yeah, we have the budget and we can move line items around. Right. Um, we can't move our salary. The only thing we can't move is our salary because as elected officials, that's set by town meeting. Right. <clears throat> but we have, um, we are way under on Pioneer Valley Planning Commission because of all the transition this year. Uh, we just paid another, what was it, seventeen hundred? Yeah. So that gives us, uh, we're still uh, forty-five hundred in there. Right. Um, and we also got a line item for. We still have supplies. That's nine hundred. It's not going to cost we, us that kind of money to have to do that. That one right there. We can take. We can. We can pull that out. Yeah. The uh, administrator right. because we're not using yeah, that. So we can. Okay. We can. Because that being that being paid for the the secretary, the yeah. Uh, yeah. secretary. Yeah, I don't think we can touch that because that is actually a, a sign to someone, you, you, even though we're not using it. But we will. We, but, could, we, we could talk about that at the next the annual town meeting. Will give us authority to do that. Yeah, well, we but we yes. we have plenty. We can move around, okay. so we, we can we can cover uh, four months. Uh, let me four see meetings. four meetings. Right. Uh, we're actually going to. Uh, did we meet on January? We didn't. We didn't meet, so we have three meetings. So three meetings. That's why right. do do the do the three meetings and it's a good starting point. Okay, there's a motion made. Got a second? I second that it right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Well, good idea. Thank, thank you, John. Wonderful. <coughs> My money. Yeah. Good idea, John. Whose idea was that? His or yours? Well, when I seen him in the town hall and I waited there for a half hour with which thought the secretary there? Yeah. I didn't. I had a person in Ham all picked up to go and go right to Northampton, but then I called Drew. I says, "Hey, I thought about these guys doing TV. How easy that would be for me." And he said, 
John would be very much interested in. So when he called me back, okay. Okay. So the one, the one thing we have to clear with is uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem since you are already a town employee. But I do have to talk to Jennifer about whether I just want to make sure that this is exempt from any procurement rules. Oh, I, oh yeah, right. I think it is below the threshold. I believe it's, I believe it's below, below the threshold. But um, she's so, I, you know, okay, sir. now that I remember doing the uh, the training online. Yeah. I remember something about you might have to get permission to do work, interdepartment work, like get the okay by somebody. I'm not sure. See, he's a department in town already because yeah. even yeah, but that, you, that can, be you can get right. You That's can get other that. departments yeah. to share. Yeah, but just to let you know, somebody may it's say like yeah, so okay. Just, you know, so we'll, we will get we will just get this all all squared away. And I hope this is not going to take six months, another year. Anything else? I've got nothing else. Anything else? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history and thank you, John.